Lost on the High Seas, a serialized gay romance taking place aboard the ocean liner, The Majestic Star. Follow along as I bring everyone on an epic southern sea adventure with love, laughter, and possible destruction. Penned by Riley Mason, narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Episode 1, For the Love of Ships. Wow, she really is a beauty, Ben said as he held a hand in front of him to shield his eyes from the sun and to be able to take in the full size of the cruise ship that was docked next to his. I agree, was the response from behind him, as he quickly realized he had spoken out loud. Turning around, Ben found a tall, slender man, must have been six-two, broad shoulders with biceps that were screaming underneath his tight uniform short, with short, salt, and pepper hair. Sorry, I didn't realize anyone was around, he said as he extended his hand. Benjamin Fairbanks. Everyone calls me Ben, shaking the guy's hand. The guy in question just stared at Ben. From his strawberry red hair down past his strong physique, as Ben was in good shape and was a bit shorter than him, younger it would seem as well. No need to be sorry. I happen to take pride in my ship, so to see someone appreciate something magnificent is A-OK -okay in my book. Brian, Brian Jericho he replied, as Brian still shook Ben's hand, as if he didn't want to let go. Strange. No words were being exchanged as both just stared at each other. Mere seconds felt like forever until the horn of a passing ship blared, snapping Ben back into reality and finally letting go of Brian's hand. Brian, clearing his throat, then came up with an idea. Why not give him a tour? Sound familiar? Brian's ship was yet another of Majestic Cruise's recent acquisitions. SACL, or South Africa Cruise Lines, was going out of business and still had ships in service. RSS Cape Town and RSS Madagascar. Both ships were recently retrofitted and upgraded to current marine sailing standards. Both were considered a perfect addition to the majestic fleet. The owner of SACL had to sell off due to an ugly divorce and sold his half to his now ex-husband and current captain of the majestic son, Brian Jericho. Brian then put the company and ships up for sale with the condition he remained on as captain. Majestic Cruises was all too happy to buy and keep him on. The Cape Town name was changed after the takeover to Majestic Sun. Majestic Sun's main tour was from Cape Town to the Southern Sea to Antarctica, as she was recently fitted with a double hull. A double hull protected the ship from floating ice if they were to come across it. Most, if not all, sailings to that area have been incident-free, with no issues of ice. Would you like to see the inside? Maybe a tour? Brian asked, hoping that Ben here would say yes. Brian was also hoping that he would be able to use that time to get to know Ben, who he saw as someone fascinating. As the ex didn't really care for the ships themselves, just the money they made. So to already have someone and something to talk about made for an easy conversation starter. The Majestic Star was not due to disembark for another hour, so it would seem that Ben had plenty of time for a tour aboard the Sun. Yet when he thought about it, he would choose work over personal time, Ben seemed to always think that the job came first, almost as if to prove himself to others. 
I would love to. However, I have a wedding to plan, guests flying in from all over, a new crew to get to know, and not to mention the new destination we have been given. Then replied, counting on his fingers just to make sure he was not forgetting anything. Brian was just staring at him with a smile. Fascinating indeed, Brian thought. I'm sure that Captain Webb wouldn't mind a small tour. However, if I am holding you up from your duties, I apologize, Brian responded, hoping a tour was still possible, yet it seemed that Ben's attention was being drawn to an older woman, a passenger, perhaps, waving and smiling at him down a ways on the dock. Anita Cromwell. Ben, quickly stepping his head back to Brian, I'm sorry, yes, I would love a tour, he said as he started to move into the direction of the son's walkway, temporarily avoiding his friend Anita for the time being. As they both walked in the direction of the walkway, Ben happened to look over his shoulder just to make sure that Anita was not following, yet just stood there, smiling as she turned to go back into the terminal. Ben was sure he would hear about this later, as she was a guest for the wedding on board the Star. For the most part, the majestic sun was no different in size than the Star, Both ships, being of the 1940s time period, still sailed with the same grandeur and elegance while still maintaining the fantastic service one would expect when sailing during that time. Ben believed it was why passengers turned into returning passengers, as it's not the same with other cruise companies. The sun was in middle of zero hour, where the ship is going through a major transformation as passengers are disembarking and new passengers are checking in. However, the sun would not be taking on passengers for another week as it was to be overhauled with new furniture and kitchen equipment. Most of the crew could be seen scurrying about to get their tasks complete as Brian and Ben made their way up the gangway into the service door which led into the stern of the ship. Inside was access to storage and crew cabins. Of course, walking through the corridors, Ben noticed it was quiet. Oh yeah, he thought. Zero hour. Also meant only one hour. So there should be no crew in their cabins. Following Brian through a side door and up a flight of stairs, they emerged on deck E. Deck E was a deck down from the main deck. Deck E also had access points on both sides of the ship as it was enclosed with large pane glass windows. This allowed for passengers to still be able to sit out on deck during rain and strong winds. Morning walkers also enjoyed this feature. Passengers found most of what they needed on this deck as it also housed the gym, smoking room, library, restaurant, and gift shop. As Ben took in all the sights of each place on the ship, he was still amazed at the beauty the ship still gave off. Beautiful stained glass adorned the tops of each window on deck. The sun just hitting it right would reveal amazing artwork, depicting oceans, ships, and sea life. The restaurant had the same type of furniture you would find in thrift stores, which were made in the 60s and 70s. Heavy wooden tables along with captain's chairs, plastic table mats along with what looked like fake artificial flowers, with perhaps a tiny amount of dust. There was no way Cecilia Harper would have the dining room looking like this. I apologize for the state in which some areas are in. We will be changing out furniture and kitchen equipment as soon as zero hour is complete. I'm happy to see new furniture throughout the ship, especially the dining room. Hopefully, they remove the mustard yellow carpet, Brian said as he pointed to the furniture and then to the carpet. 
I agree. I... Oh, yes, it definitely needs to go, Ben replied as they both moved on to take the crew access to the main bridge. Captain on the bridge, a crewman said as they both walked in as Ben's eyes went straight to the huge front windows that looked out towards the sea. Along with a nice view to the right of the crew on board the bridge of the star as they were side by side, with the dock in the middle. The sun's bridge was slightly different than the star or even the coral. The ship was still steered by wheel. As the others used new technology and even remote control. The controls on the star reminded Ben when he would play Microsoft Flight Simulator and the giant joystick you would need in either to fly the planes. You seem to have a more elaborate map of your ship back here, Ben said as he was looking at a colorful side blueprint of the entire ship. Similar purpose as the other bridges, however, this was more detailed. You could see where every light, pull station, fire door, water, power, and even the watertight doors by the corresponding lights. Lastly, Ben noticed an added red line below the water line. Curious. What does this red line mean, as I've not seen it on others? Ben asked, as Brian walked over to see what he was referring to. That is where the double hull sensor is. If ice or something was to penetrate the hull, the sensor would let us know where giving us time to repair before, ultimately, more damage happening. Almost like shields on a starship, he said, laughing. Nice one, Captain Kirk, Ben replied, adding, Did you know that Captain Webb dubs the fireman's walkway Jeffrey's Tube? I find that logical, don't you? Ben finished with a wink. I take it you're a science fiction fan. Brian asked as they walked off the bridge and down to the main deck. Ben could see the deck crew changing out the pillows on the lounge chairs as they repositioned them in their original place. Railing and windows were being cleaned as they walked down towards the lobby, which was a sight in itself. Mahogany wooden panels with gold and white crown molding with gold-framed artwork attached to the walls, including one of the sun, or rather the Cape Town, sailing on a beautiful sunny day, which was mounted behind the customer service desk. A fitting place. Original fixtures still hung from the walls like half-moons, which helped illuminate the paintings, while the natural light took care of the rest as Ben looked up to see the glass dome. Shaking his head in amazement, Ben replied, Of course. A cruise ship is as close as I'm going to get to being on a starship. Voyager fan myself. How about you? They stopped as they had made it to the dock. Picard, all the way. I have never watched Voyager. Maybe we can sit and watch it together sometime. Of course, I won't be seeing you until your return trip, so... Hopefully we can maybe plan something. In the meantime, you can always get a hold of me, Brian said as he was starting to fumble. He was trying to sound casual, even though he was sad at the fact that he just met Ben and already he was disembarking. Yet the way Ben was looking at him made Brian feel like Ben understood what he was trying to say. Of course, and thank you for the tour. You have a beautiful ship, which I'm sure, given the week coming up, it will look even better when it's all said and done, Ben said, as they both slowly walked back towards the terminal. As Ben and Captain Webb were the first people passengers greeted when they came on board, he always liked to be already in the terminal, chatting with passengers, patiently waiting to board. Well, Ben, it was a pleasure to show you my ship. I wish we had more time. Where is your tour bring you this time? He asked, 
maybe he would see him again at a different port. The Southern Sea. Apparently, Majestic is having a sail to a certain position, keeping us away from the ice field they keep talking about. Then take our time coming back, Ben said, looking a bit concerned. Bold move for a ship without shields, Brian said with a smirk. You should be fine as long as this route keeps you away from the ice field and in the safety zone. You don't want to get into all that. Have a safe journey, Ben, Brian said as he shook Ben's hand and turned to walk back to his ship. It was now time to mingle with the passengers, as it was almost boarding time. Ben could see that Captain Webb had already made it to the gangway entrance, as he seemed to be chatting with Anita. Oh boy, I wonder what she's talking about now, Ben thought to himself, as he made his way over to them.